gentlemen. This burrito is delicious, but it is filling. Hi again. This is Samantha with the DevOps Library, Episode 1. We're glad you found yourself here. Today we're going to be going over Vagrant. What's Vagrant? Well, if you're on the operations side of the fence, Vagrant gives you a disposable testing environment, making it extremely easy to test new scripts or build a lab. If you're a developer, Vagrant allows for you to script full environment builds so that others can just run Vagrant up to have everything they need installed for them. We actually use Vagrant for most of our videos, and almost all of them have a Vagrant file included. So if you ever want to follow along with our videos on the exact same VMs, Vagrant allows you to do that. Okay, well let's go ahead and get started. Go to vagrantup.com and download the installer. We'll be running it on Windows, but they do have packages for OS X and Linux as well. Now let's install it. Vagrant is made by HashiCorp. If you're not familiar with them, they have a ton of other great DevOps tools, including Packer, Terraform, and Console. You should check it out. All right, it looks like the install is finally finished. Don't worry about restarting just yet, as we will still need to install a hypervisor. Head to virtualbox.org and download the installation package. While that's installing, let's go ahead and talk about providers. Vagrant uses the concept of providers to determine what platform our VMs are launched on. While we're using VirtualBox for this tutorial, you could just as easily use VMware, Docker, Hyper-V, or even EC2. One of the coolest parts about Vagrant is how easy it is to switch providers. You could work offline, for instance, using VirtualBox, then one day decide to have Vagrant create a bunch of identical VMs on Amazon. Isn't that cool? Well, anyway, it looks like our VirtualBox install just finished. So let's go ahead and just restart your computer. It looks like we're finally ready to get started with Vagrant. Go ahead and open up a prompt. We just need to create a new folder named Vagrant. Now inside that folder, create one more directory named Episode 1, then CD into it. We'll start out with Vagrant by creating an Ubuntu VM, and to do so we're going to need a Vagrant box. So let's head to atlas.hashicorp.com search. Atlas is a service provided by HashiCorp, which has a huge collection of Vagrant boxes to choose from. If you search for Ubuntu, you should see a box named Ubuntu Trusty64. We'll go ahead and use that one. All right, back to the prompt. You should still be in our Episode 1 folder. Let's go ahead and type Vagrant init Ubuntu Trusty64. What Vagrant init does is initialize the current directory for Vagrant by creating a Vagrant file. Vagrant files are extremely powerful and useful, but for now we'll leave it with the default configuration. Okay, now run Vagrant up. Vagrant is now downloading the Ubuntu 14.04 image directly from Atlas. Once it's finished, it'll also automatically bring up a new VM for us using VirtualBox since that's the provider that we installed. Ah, it's finally finished. Okay, now run Vagrant SSH. Okay, there you go. We're now on our brand new Ubuntu VM. Go ahead and feel free to play around a little bit. There's one folder we want to show you though. Type CD Vagrant. Now let's just create a file. Type touch synced file. Alright, let's go look at our episode 1 folder real quick. Okay, there's the file we just created. Do you see it? Vagrant uses what's called synced folders. So everything that you add in this folder is available to both the host and the VM. Again, very, very cool. Okay, once you're done with the Ubuntu VM, run Vagrant Destroy. Vagrant Destroy will completely delete the VM. Then whenever we want to hop back on a fresh Ubuntu server, all we need to do is call Vagrant Up again. All right, let's open our Vagrant file and take a look. We're going to delete the comments so that it's easier to see how little this file actually is. See? It's actually very, very simple. Okay, now let's replace Ubuntu Trusty64 with L. Mayorga, 1980, Windows, 2012 R2. This is just a really nice Windows image that we found on Atlas. It already has Puppet and Chocolatey installed. Oh, and if you're not familiar with Puppet, it's used for configuration management, and Chocolatey is like apt-get, but for Windows. We do have our tutorials available on those two if you need a little bit more in-depth help, but let's go ahead and keep going on this one. Now let's add a few lines to our Vagrant file. Go ahead and add config.vm.communicator 
equals winrm config.vm.network forwarded port guest 3389 host 53389 config.vm.provision shell inline puppet module install force riz money chocolatey config.vm.provision puppet. All right, so now let's talk about what each of those lines did. The first one just tells Vagrant that we'd like to use WinRM for communicating with our VM instead of SSH. The forwarded port is just pointing the VM's RDP port to our host machine at port 53389. You don't have to use that port, of course. We just chose one that wouldn't be in use. The Puppet Module install line is actually installing a Puppet Module used for controlling Chocolatey. It's extremely powerful, which you'll see shortly. The last line that we added tells Vagrant that we want to use Puppet for provisioning our VM. You can use pretty much anything for provisioning, from PowerShell scripts to Chef recipes, but for this tutorial we're going to stick with Puppet. Alright, we know you're wanting to Vagrant up this box, but we're going to do one last thing. In our Episode 1 folder, create a new folder named Manifests. Puppet by default will look in this folder for a file named default pp. Let's go ahead and create it now. Node, default, bracket, package, bracket, sublime text 3, ensure latest, provider chocolatey, then close both brackets. All right, we're finally finished. Go ahead and run Vagrant up. It'll take a little while to download the image, so let's go ahead and talk about what this is going to do. Vagrant is going to download the Server 2012 image, install a chocolatey module for Puppet, then once it looks at our manifest file, it will automatically install Sublime Text 3. Finally, OK, our VM is ready. Now just type Vagrant RDP. Use username Vagrant, password Vagrant. And OK, there's our Sublime Text. Great job! Remember, you can now do whatever you'd like with this VM. Then the moment you want to start from scratch, you can just Vagrant Destroy and Vagrant up it again. Vagrant has a ton of other features, but this should be plenty to get you going. Thanks again for watching our tutorial, and as always, please leave any comments, questions, or thoughts you have in the comment section. We appreciate you watching. Take care for now. Bye-bye.